Hi, so in the previous video we derived our labour market equilibrium and briefly discussed the implications this would have for goods market equilibrium, but in this video we're going to properly look at goods market equilibrium. So I've already drawn up some axes and when we're thinking about goods market equilibrium we are thinking of these uh, demand and supply functions being drawn out in interest rate and output space and for this case we're going to talk about output in period one as we're in an intertemporal model uh, so we can only model our static um, output in two-dimensional space if we wanted to draw up a three-dimensional model then we could we could maybe start to think about looking at decisions in multiple periods but we're going to stick to just looking at period one output in this diagram. So in the previous video we looked at labour market equilibrium and I'll just do a very brief and a sloppy diagram here where so we had wage on the y-axis and labour on the x-axis and we had some sort of labour demand function and a labour supply function and we looked at where the equilibrium was there, we had L star and W star. And so the demand for labour, we were just saying, depended on productivity, maybe some other stuff, but we'll focus on the important variables for this model. And then our labour supply, how much workers are willing to supply labour, depends on the interest rate and the relative wage rate. This is, of course, uh, demand and supply still in period one. So our supply of demand in period one depends on our relative wage rates and we said that if we if we change any of these factors that these curves depend on then we're going to cause a shift in the curve so if we increase productivity we're going to shift out the demand curve and this will give us a new labor supply choice and say if we if we change the relative wage rate we're going to shift our supply curve and this will give us a new point and so on and so and this all this all affects our output, our supply of output in the economy, because what we're doing is we're increasing or decreasing labor. And as in the previous video, we said that our output is some function of labor. So if we increase labor, we're going to be increasing output. So we can use this labor market equilibrium to derive a supply curve in our goods market and we're going to call that y1 supply let me quickly just get rid of this all this stuff on the right hand side that was just to illustrate my point very roughly and quickly so we have this uh, supply function y1 supplied and this is going to depend on our labor market equilibrium so it depends on the productivity parameter, the interest rate in period one. Uh, I'll put the, this productivity parameter is a one there, actually make that clearer, and this is a comma next to it. There we have the interest rate in period one with a comma next to it, and the relative wage rates in period one and two. And we could have other stuff, but we're not gonna focus on those. They're secondary to this model. And so this is what our output or supply function is given by and if we think about what I was just doing in shifting the curves, we see that the productivity parameter, our output depends positively on productivity. If we increase productivity, we are going to increase our output. If we increase our interest rate, we are also going to increase output in period one. Uh, a couple of videos ago, we discussed this. So if we increase our interest rate, this is going to incentivize our workers to work more in period one and then save that income into period two at a higher interest rate R. So our output depends positively on the interest rate, and it also depends positively on this ratio of wages. And again, we discussed this two videos ago. If we increase the relative wage in period one compared to period two, our workers are going to substitute a labor from period two into period one, and this will increase our output more. So this is our supply function and what it depends on and writing it out in this form will, is very useful it makes it very clear that if we're increasing productivity we see this po this positive sign next to our 
supply function and so we shift out our supply function to the right because we've increased productivity. Now for equilibrium we also need a demand function and this is a very simple demand function it's just going to be our consumption function which we looked at in videos ages ago uh, when we were looking very a very simple forms of this model so let's draw our consumption demand function and so our consumption is just going to depend again on the interest rate r1 because if we if we increase or decrease our interest rate this is going to affect our saving and consumption choice if we have a higher interest rate we're more likely to want to save income from period one uh, and then spend it in period two so uh, while i'm writing this down we'll we'll put that this that our consumption depends negatively on the interest rate uh, for that reason but this consumption function also depends on the present value of income and um, we could have some other factors factoring in here um, and let's think about this as well. How how does consumption vary with present value of income? Well, very simply, it depends positively positively on this. If we increase our income, we're going to increase our consumption in both periods through the income effect. So we have more money, we're going to consume more. And so, okay, now we've got a demand and a supply function. So we have an equilibrium point where these two are equal, demand and supply are equal, so we have some optimal or some equilibrium R1 star and some output star in period one. So that's that's our goods market equilibrium. So that just about wraps up this video. Check out the next video on the playlist where I'm going to just look at the effects of permanent and temporary changes in productivity on goods market equilibrium. Subscribe for future videos and do drop a like if this video was at all useful.